Oh, hi. What was I supposed to be saying? Oh, yeah. You're listening to We Do Talk with Laura Duff. <laughs> Hello, Indiana. Hi, Laura. How, how are, are you doing? doing? I'm great. I'm, I'm great. great. <laughs> We're both great and we both asked how we are. Uh, Guys, we've got quite an exciting day lined up for us. We are going to be discussing something that you all want to know the answer to. How do you find your purpose in life? We all wonder this. Well, the thing is, Indiana has the answers, don't you, Indiana? Oh yeah, I'm full of answers. She's got the answers, so just listen to the end of this podcast and we'll be sorted. But before we get into the topic, Indiana, tell us a little bit about yourself. My name is Indiana Gregg. I'm from originally from the Midwest, United States, from the state of Indiana. I moved to, to Europe in 1993. I have three kids, started quite a few companies and worked with quite a few startups. I'm the founder of WeDo, um, which is a lifestyle brand. And uh, I guess our listeners will find out more about that in the near future when we when we release. Can you believe we are as lucky to have the founder of We Do on a We Do Talk? <laughs> I mean, I know, guys, like, how did it happen? How did, it, <laughs> how did we manage to wrangle that one up? <laughs> it's magic. It is magic. I, do, I don't know how I managed to get the contact, but here we are speaking with the founder of We Do on our, <laughs> it must be our fifth We Do Talk. What we're talking about today is, I feel like it's quite an important issue for everybody because your purpose, whatever that means to you, that is what motivates you to do what you do to work for where you work or whatever the first thing we're going to discuss is what does purpose mean for me purpose is is being honest with yourself and being honest with others really what i think people think about when they're talking about purpose is where is my value in like kind of what makes me feel fulfilled or what will make me feel fulfilled and a lot of times when you're young and you're searching for it maybe you're in university or you just left school or or whatever position you are in life your purpose has a lot to do with oh what am I going to do with my life you know where do I find a sense of value what am I good at and how can I use my talents or skills and a lot of people are like well maybe I don't have any talents or skills or some people think I'm embarrassed to do something that I don't know how to do because that sets me up for potential failure and I think a lot of people are risk averse that way. Your purpose is really who you are and finding yourself as a human being. So purpose is a lot bigger than just finding a job or or making this big decision of something that you're going to do for the rest of your life, I think. Yeah, because I, I think a lot of people think it's a destination. Like at some point they're just going to wake up and they're, they'll have found it. And I think that's the mistake that people make and why they tend to feel unsatisfied because they're expecting some sort of feeling of completeness with yeah. The the outside things in their life when really that has to come from within. I think purpose is probably a pretty high class situation to be in if you're struggling with it. It's a it's a very much a maybe a, what you would consider a, a spoiled first world issue. <laughs> Most people in on the planet are busy looking for a way to eat or a way to survive. At the same time, no matter who you are as a human being, being true to yourself and understand, understanding your kind of role in a in a situation, in a tribe, in a group, in a in in society, you know, and and where you want to take yourself and push yourself is part of that purpose walk. But it's more of a journey, like you said. It's not a destination. Yeah, it definitely does mean different things to other people. It depends on where you're from, you know, your culture, your financial situation. Purpose is something that will affect everybody, but it can mean something completely different depending on their perspective. Do you think that judgment gets in the way of finding your purpose? Yeah, I think self-criticism does. A lot of times you'll be like, oh, I really would like to do that. I really would like to try something. I'd really like to get involved in something. And there's this little voice in, inside a lot of people's head that says, oh, well, you can't do that. That would be setting yourself up for a big fail. You're going to fail. So you may as well get in a hurry to fail at least a little bit so that you can find your feet so that you make progress. And a lot of people are very, very averse to that. They settle for a lot less than what their potential in life could be. They'll work a job that they really can't stand, but at least it pays you know, it's a means to an end or, or whatever. And that's okay as long as you don't extend that into your life for too long. If you really wish you're doing something else and you're not doing what you wish you were doing, you need to start somewhere and start doing it, even in your free time. And there's also this kind of sense of people when they get stuck in a job or stuck in a rut that they can't, they feel as though they can't get away from it. It's almost like it's too late. Yeah, they become kind of a job's worth and I'm stuck doing this because yeah. I have to support maybe myself, my family, uh, pay bills or, you know, get rid of credit or whatever situation. It's at those moments 
it's, it's important to take a step back and, and say, well, actually I do have two or three hours a week that I could work towards learning this new skill or developing an idea. And, and I think that this is a real issue in our culture that people want things in a hurry. We're living in fast fashion, fast news, 24 hours, seven news, loads of distraction, social media, everything. It's always just the final point. There's, there's nothing, there's nothing in between. Yeah. You're seeing things happen in front of you and you don't realize the, the work or the work ethic or the integrity that people have put into what they've accomplished or what they've done. And it feels like, oh, they're born with a silver spoon or they've had, you know, they've never had to struggle with anything. Yeah. They haven't had any hard knocks. You know, a lot of people don't see from the outside when they're looking into someone's life, all the steps that they took. And I don't think there's enough information out there or enough people talking about the steps that it takes. It's almost like something that just doesn't happen because since nobody's talking about, say the people that have worked so hard and get to a point that other people kind of envy, they don't want to talk about the journey because nobody else is doing it. They want to keep up the whole, yes, I... Facade. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think also, you know, they don't realise the time and effort and the sacrifice a lot of people will make if they want to achieve a dream or a goal. They might not start the family when they wanted to or when they thought they should. They may have done something completely different than a lot of their friends were doing at the time. At uni, they might not have been out partying, having a good time and wearing the latest fashion because they were devoting time. And money, even. Time and money to, to learning a skill or, yeah. or developing their idea. Purpose has a lot to do with your sense of drive. There's no point wishing that you could be something else or be, do something else if you don't have the drive to actually put in the time and the work involved or and the ingenuity involved or the creativity involved, there's a process and it, everyone has talents and it's not just about being, you know, the next Steve Jobs. Yeah, because obviously everyone's going to, everyone's going to wish they were that, but nobody's going to wish for the work that they put behind it. Everyone would say, I wish I was Steve Jobs. He's a genius. He's, well, was. He was so rich and everything, but the minute they see the amount of stuff that he did in his lifestyle before, they'd probably be like, uh, I think I'll just stick with this one. I think also a lot of people lack commitment. And for me, if you want to get anything going or get anything out, off the ground, it's a lot of baby steps that lead to yeah. that big giant journey. You build and you build and you move and you move. And it's constant. you're never going to get to the other side of the world if you don't consistently do and make a commitment to doing and that's what we do is all about. Yeah, it is. We are. We do. It's not about the. It's not about the sitting at home and the quick. The quickness. It's about the steps that we take to become the better version of ourselves, isn't it? That's the truth, though. It's every little step you take that leads down that road. But I remember, like you know, when I was a kid in high school and even at uni and all throughout my life, people would make fun of me because they're like, "Oh, I can't believe you haven't seen." this television show. But I felt like watching television, unless it's to learn about story and there's a great plot there and I really want to learn about that story and how they built the story. And I was the same with listening to music. If I listen to music, I want to analyze, oh, when they wrote that, what were they thinking or where did they go with that? But, I mean, that's part of me and I have to be transparent about who I am. Interesting. I, I can be a little bit over analytical. If I'm interested in something, I want to find out how it works and I want to learn everything about that thing. And I'm a little bit extreme and over the top. I mean, I was talking to my brother the other day and he was like, you take a lot of risks. And I'm like, well, do I? He said, no, because you, you know, you usually know what you're doing. Yeah when you're taking those risks. That's the way I operate. Yeah. But I hated being made fun of because I hadn't seen some series that everybody's like going raving about. It's things like that. You know, the time that you give up, a lot of people spend hours watching YouTube videos or hours watching Netflix or, you know, and in that time, you, you could be creating. And I know everyone needs downtime and relaxation or, you know, and, and people find that in different ways. I, I just prefer to find it. I feel more relaxed if I'm reading a book that I'm interested in. It's, it's those steps, Laura. It's, I think, you know, little steps go a long way. Yeah. And that takes you further and further. Because every little step, for example, one, you could have one conversation with somebody and that 
even after do- working for weeks and weeks on something and it's just not nothing's happening with it and then you happen to speak to the right person at the right time one little conversation and that could just that could have been it that could have been the turning point you never know when it's going to happen you just have to keep putting yourself out there in the direction that you want to go it doesn't matter about the speed of it and I do think that's a problem with our society I do expect you know everything to come straight away and it they they don't realize the work that needs to go in between it. I think there's, yeah, there's a sense of entitlement. Um, there's a sense of, well, this is happening for so-and-so. Why shouldn't it happen for me? There's a lack of transparency with people uh, when they, when they, you know, reveal themselves. Uh, I, I think everybody recognizes that. I mean, Instagram and the filters, people filtering their lives, you yes. know, <laughs> but it's it's only when you are actually true with yourself and true to other people that they open up to you and then they go, Oh, I really would like to get involved in your project or I really would like to get you know, to get to know what you're doing and get involved. And you have to weed the doers from the not doers, you know? It's like the chaff from the wheat. You wanna get the good stuff. It's like that saying that's like stop talking and start doing. Yeah. Because it's the people exactly. that it's the people that say Oh, they're all talk and they they kind of put you down and they say they're doing all these things, but then in reality they're not actually doing anything. It's just a bunch yeah. of words, and that's something I've learned. If yeah. I I feel like if I'm in a position where I'm talking too much about what I'm doing, I know myself that I'm overcompensating because I'm not actually putting. You know, like say for example. Oh, when I was younger, I'd say, oh, I want to become an actress. Like I can see this happen, and I'd always talk about it, but I'd never actually go to a drama club. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like I, I was just I was all talk you yeah. know I may have been like 10 but still I could see it in the young me I was all talk not, not actually doing anything for what I thought I wanted to do at that point I think also people get you know if you find yourself doing more in one area of your life that chances are you are driven by that or you enjoy yeah. it and yeah. that that might be something that you you consider to pursue especially for young people when you're young you know you have a little bit of time to not play around but you know learn a little bit about different different ideas or different areas that where you could use your skills or use your talents or, or create your own sense of value purpose is like every day of your life purpose is when you wake up and you you have a plan that you want to get certain things done you want to talk to certain people you want to study for a certain subject that you have goals but the, you kind of create a system to your goals to lead you down the paths of things that you're interested in and focus, you know, on that, those paths. Once you identify, oh, I, I think I'd really like to do this. Be as great at what you would really like to do as you possibly can yeah. be. And whenever you, you felt good about yourself when you did well on an exam at school, for example, you felt good about yourself uh, that you, that you achieved a certain goal, yeah. or whether it's in learning a dance move. It makes you realize how much you can do if you pass your exams people that are passing their you know hires right now they'll think i never thought i'd get to this point when they're first year of high school they they look at the people doing their hires and they think no way i'm never going to be able to set them and then they they really it opens up their mind to what they can do in the future because they're they're they know they're capable yeah because they've actually tried they've gone they've sat the exam they've maybe studied (laughs) i think that's the thing as well i think excuses come a lot in the way of finding your purpose and I think people tend to complain a lot and they they complain and they make excuses and that takes up so much of their time that how are you meant to be happy and satisfied if you're spending your whole time making excuses up oh I'm I've got this and I've got that or I can't do that and all these things and it's like anybody could say they couldn't do something or anybody could say they they could yeah well I think you know consistence and persistence you know beats any resistance oh. and it's the minute that you actually <laughs> you're just you're minute, you know wax the lyrics <laughs> no but um you know consistence persistence you know it will help you beat any resistance but if you're already self-doubting and you're already setting yourself up and saying well I, I really mm. can't do that it's really because you're not that interested and you're not going to devote the time to it because there's other things that are taking priority yeah either at that moment or in your life or, or whatever you get these people who are like i'm going to write a book and then it's like 10 years later you finished your book no i'm I, i've actually changed my mind i'm writing a different book now and and they know they go through their whole life and they never write their story or their book or the you know they say that everybody has a book in them and and lot lot yada 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 but you get people who 
who set goals for themselves and don't want to take those daily steps to get to them. That's kind of self-destruction already. You have to just commit daily. Be religious about who you are, your purpose. Even if you don't know what your purpose is, it's you. Yeah. Is your it? goal is to be the best you that you can possibly be. And if you're being the best you that you can possibly be, it means you're treating people where, well, you're being fair. You, you're authentic. You're, you're true to your beliefs. Yeah. You're not saying one thing and doing another thing. If you want to wake up in the morning and be happy with yourself and be like, I'm here today. I'm, I'm happy with what I've done or how, how I've handled a situation, you know, or at least that you, you've done every effort or you've tried to be as fair as you can be in situations, whatever it is, those are all part of things that feed into that purpose. And it's not your ego that you're feeding, you're, you're feeding your, your, your value to yourself and to others, your transparency, your honesty. That, that's a good point. I think that that's the thing you, people need to realize that it's not about your ego. It's about your, you know, the, what you give to the world and what you give back to yourself. It's not about, you know, feeling like having to feel like you're the best or something that, that is, that disrupts your journey on finding your purpose, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And the self-criticism doesn't help. You have to learn to love yourself before you can love others. And I think love is kind of the encapsulation of it all, you know. In purpose, if you're acting out of self-love and you're loving others out of self-love, through that you can learn to give more to to the world. I think people, you know, there's kind of factory production of, of people just being jobs work. They don't want to work beyond what they're paid, so they don't really get themselves out of that rut yeah. of never getting better. Yeah. And they and that's a value point too. That's an, you know? almost an ego they, thing. They don't value themselves enough. Yeah, exactly. I think it's a it's an ego thing. Do you think that the fact that people think finding your purpose is just your profession that comes in the way of people actually finding it. Yeah, I think so. I think you, this binding of, you know, the reality is that we went through an industrial age and everybody turned up at, and clocked in when time stamped themselves, mm. worked a certain number of hours, got their pennies and went to the pub at night. And <laughs> Sounds like me at Scotland. <laughs> right? <laughs> that factory approach, the factory approach in education as well. Education isn't something you just do for 12 or 13 or, or 16 or whatever years of your life. Education is literally learning new and being relevant to what's now as well, you know, and a continued um, effort to actually continue learning in your life because the world changes. If you're not moving with the world and devoting a little bit of your time to, to progressing that way, then you're going to lose out on part of like who you are. And